Well, greetings, printing enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Tegaw 3D. Today's episode, I want to talk about Blender's Curve Modifier for 3D printing. I have found Blender's modifiers to be very powerful and sometimes a little confusing. And one of those modifiers that's both powerful and confusing is the Curve Modifier. Today, I thought I'd do a quick overview of that modifier and then go ahead and share a bunch of projects that I've done uh, using that modifier. And then finally, uh, for those of you who may want to explore it on your own, I'll end with some tips and tricks to try to make your journey a little more smooth. Now the curve modifier lets you take your object and kind of hook it on to a curve like a railroad track. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna take this text that says curve modifier and blender, and I'm gonna say, hey, I wanna, um, align you, I want to hook you up to uh, this curve right here. So I select the object that I want to impact and I go ahead and hit on the little wrench, the modifiers properties. Uh, I go ahead and add modifier and hit curve and it pick my curve object. Now it's like a train and it, this is the path that it's going to be taking. Um, if I go ahead, um, my deform axis is the X, so this is the way that it's going to be traveling along my curve. So if I take my X arrow, the red arrow, and I start moving uh, my object back and forth, you can see that it's following that exact path and um, it's uh, distorting as it travels. And then one thing that is interesting to note is your object doesn't have to be exactly on this curve. It's almost like, you know, you throw a stone in the middle of a pond and you see the ripples uh, come across that pond. If I move this object further or closer to um, my curve, it will distort uh, just as if that curve was uh, spreading out along the pond. The most common thing that I've used the curve modifier for is text. I like customizing 3D prints with texts and often I want them to be curved. So this is my maker coin and you can see the text is curved and you can even see the curve that I distorted around. You don't have to think of the text having to be flat on your build plate or on the top surface of your print. Uh, this is a custom gazebo that I did and the text here is curved around the base uh, facing up and down. We tend to think of curves as rounded and flowing and that doesn't have to be the case in Blender or your use of the curve modifier. This is a coffee cup that I did uh, for my husband back when Shapeways was doing porcelain and the uh, characters on the cup are um, distorted along an octagon. Now the curve that you're distorting on, you don't have to think of it as a 2D curve. You could take full advantage of the 3D space. This is the 3D model of the standing cancer ribbon, which I do customize frequently with text. Uh, the ribbon itself is made out of a curve, and perhaps we'll talk about that one day in a different video. Uh, today, we'll talk about the text here, which is uh, distorted over a 3D curve, which is pretty much a copy of the curve of its ribbon. And as example, outside of text, uh, this is another project back in uh, my Shapeways days. I did a dial a lantern which um, with uh, moving parts where you can spin and configurate the faces. Now before I carved out the faces of this pumpkin, and by the way, these particular faces were designed by kids at Maker Faire Nova 2015, um, but back to the topic at hand, before I uh, carved these out of the pumpkin, I used a curve modifier on them uh, just to make sure that the faces themselves looked right on the surface of my pumpkin and didn't look distorted or uh, mutated. The curve modifier can simplify your 3D modeling process. Uh, for Maker Faire Nova 2018, I did upcycling projects and I made cuff bracelets out of soda cans. So here, I modeled my bracelet flat and this allowed me to think about my clearances and how I wanted the design to look. And at the very end, then I used the curve modifier on a curve that I traced from an actual bracelet that my father gave me. And probably my favorite example of the curve modifier in action comes from my Cthulhu air plant holder. I used it with the wings. So the wing itself I designed 
flat, uh, very much like the cuff bracelet. Um, I added something called the subdivision surface modifier to make it nice and smooth and look a little organic. And then I uh, used the curve modifier with this 3D curve here to try to shape it. Then I was able to edit my curve and change it real time. And really, it's almost, it's not quite rigging like you would with animation, uh, but it still uh, gave me enough um, control here that I could go and pick and choose and figure aesthetically how I wanted these wings to be. Now, a lot of those projects that you just saw, especially the older ones, my technique for making the curve modifier work was brute force. I would just go through every possible option for deform access. I would scale, I would rotate, I would move things around, I would do everything possible until I got what I wanted it to look like. There are a few tips to hopefully make your journey a little smoother so you don't have to use as much brute force. The first tip that I would give you is just be aware that your curves, even your circles, have directions. So here I have some text that I want to go ahead and curve around this simple circle. Uh, I click on my text, I added my modifier, and I turn it on, and my text is going backwards. I kind of want it to go counterclockwise, but it's going clockwise. To explain that, I'm going to go ahead and click on my circle uh, to select it. And I'm going to go to edit mode. And uh, by default, I'm not seeing the direction of my circle. In Blender, if you go down over here to the viewport overlays, down under curve edit mode, there's handles. You can hit select it, select it, and you can see these arrows pointing the direction of your curve. Uh, so if things are going backwards than you expected when you add your modifier, it could be because your curve direction. So one thing that you can do here is just simply right click on the curve and do switch direction. Here's another example, the same kind of setup. We have our text, we have our circle, uh, we apply our modifier, uh, it's going backwards to what we expect. We flip over to edit mode and we see, wait a minute, the curve is pointing in the direction I expected it to be pointing, but my text is going backwards. So here you need to know that your curves are also sensitive to your scale. So I go back into my object mode and I'm looking at my scale and for my curve it's negative, which means it's going to be flip-flopped from uh, what you expect. So you know I can switch directions, I can change um, my scale from negative to positive, we'll keep the same dimensions or um, I optionally I could have gone right click and done switch directions again too. So the next thing to be conscious of is your object origins, which is the yellow dot uh, that Blender shows whenever your object is selected. So here I have some text and it appears to be right on the curve that I have. I turn on my curve modifier and it's weird and distorted. So there's two things going on here. Uh, first off, we saw at the beginning when I was demonstrating the curve modifier that it goes along the path of the curve and you can um, move it further away from the curve and it'll try to you know, adjust accordingly. So the first thing that's happening here is um, my, um, my object origin of my text is up high on the y-axis right here and over on my curve it's uh, further down and so it's making adjustments right there. Uh, another thing I just want to illustrate here is a blender will project the continuation of the curve based on its last uh, direction. You can see at the very last second my curve is changing directions down here and so that's what that weird u-turn uh, that you're seeing there. So a best practice that I would recommend is making sure that your object origins match and that um, I tend to place both object origins at the very beginning of where I want to curve. Uh, so over here first on my Bezier curve that I'm using to do the distortion, it's this weird arbitrary point over here. 
um, I'm going to go ahead and click at the beginning of my curve and I can make sure that's the beginning of the curve by looking at the direction of it. And I'm going to go to curve snap um, cursor to selected, which will move my 3D cursor here. Um, when I go back to object mode, I can go to object set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Okay. Now, uh, we'll go ahead and turn this off momentarily here. Um, I want to just make sure that this, uh, the origin or the coordinates of my text uh, exactly matches the origin of my curve where I want to start the distortion. And so I'll just look over here, my transform, my properties, and I will just start copying and pasting. Or, you know, I could just move it too, but I'm a copy and paste kind of person. Control C, and there's also a snap tool if you're not a copy and paste type of person. And now when I turn on my curve modifier, it's much more expected. My next tip applies to if you're working with uh, mesh modeling, uh, like I was with my cuff bracelet or my Cthulhu air plant holder. In those cases, you want to be sensitive to the geometry, how many vertices and how um, detailed is your object that you're trying to bend on your curve. Uh, so as an example, I have a quick little rectangle here and I have my um, nice little busy curve. I go ahead and apply my curve modifier and you can see it's not really following the curve, it's making like a quick little straight line. Um, if I go into edit mode, I can see, oh, I just have um, my eight vertices, so four over here and four over here, and so I'm not giving the curve modifier uh, very much to work with when it's deciding how to distort my object. And so a quick solution here is I'm just going to add more geometry to the object. So I'm going to hit control R for my loop cut and I'm going to scroll wheel up to make a whole bunch of little cuts here and go ahead and enter. And then now uh, when the curve modifier is applied, because I have all those extra vertices to work with, uh, it's going to go and be more uh, distinctive uh, to my curve. Well, thank you for watching. If you made it this far and you're not a Blender user, but you're intrigued and you'd like to learn more, uh, maybe you learn really well from videos and you want something that's more geared towards beginners, uh, the one thing I can recommend is Jay Wall from Print That Thing. He has a whole Blender course and I took one of them and I rather enjoyed it. I'll put the link down below and that's something that you can explore. Um, either way, thank you for watching and have a great day.